Hello everyone. This is going to be very fun for you to watch. This here is the Signature Dishes That Matter cookbook, which is a collection of signature dishes from top restaurants and chefs around the world. It's amazing. And we are going to cook from it. We have no idea what recipe we are about to attempt. It's because we're two top chefs. That's that is why. exactly why. Yeah. Hello, boys. Oh. Hello, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, boys. While Barry and Ben are off filming in France, we thought it would be fun to challenge you to another recipe from one of our favourite cookbooks. Please turn to page 190 for the dish and page 374 for the recipe. You have two hours. Good luck. Wiley Dufresne, 2003. Shrimp noodles. Shrimp noodles. That doesn't sound horrific. I don't feel a sense of dread yet. Oh wait, yes I do. What is a noodle exactly? How much science should there be in a restaurant kitchen? These were just two of the questions raised when experimental New York chef Wiley Dufresne debuted his delicious Frankenpasta at WD50. Inspired by a conversation with Heston Blumenthal, brilliant, at his restaurant. Yeah, when two people like that get together and go, what's, what's the craziest thing we could cook? Let's put it in a book and get two n <laughs> to cook it. <laughs> Dufresne began working with a powdered meat glue that allowed him to transform pureed shrimp into linguine-like strands of pasta. So we're making pasta out of shrimp? No simple feat. Good. It required piping the force meat into an extruder, dropping the noodles into an immersion circulator, then cutting each noodle by hand. The idea of carb-free noodles caused a buzz in the media and online forums. Mate, mate, it's keto. Yeah, it is keto. It, that's both of our diets. I have not done keto for a number of years. We're pureeing shrimp, combining it with meat glue, and turning it into noodles. So this, this basically started a massive trend of using meat glue to stick unlike proteins to create a uniform looking hull. You could make a medieval beast if you wanted to, said Dufresne. Wiley, we have enough <laughs> on our plate. Get to the recipe, let's start cooking. This is gonna be hell. Right, okay, so we're gonna start with the shrimp oil. So it's essentially chopping up a load of ve veg and it's Celery, carrot, onion, which is a sofrito. Or, or a mirepoix. Mira we're going to be fine. But 60 grams of each, so we need to make sure. Ooh, that's a lot. Oh, yeah, good point. Do that. That's not enough. <laughs> I always say you can never have enough celery. That's enough. 58 is nearly 60, isn't it? You've already got bored. Are you OK? Silence is the loudest cry for help. Jamie, talk to me. Don't get- We're going to strain the oil, so don't worry about it being exactly a fine dice. Yes, this is our style of cooking. We right. just want flavour from this. Onions, done. Remember, you only need 60 grams, and that looks like a hefty one. About a tablespoon. Boop. Can we turn the hob on? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a head start. I'm warming the veg. Celery going in. Let me join you. Carrot going in. Onion in. Right, we need 400 grams of shrimp shells. These are shrimps in their shells. Okay. Well, because you're passing it, you're just going to take the flavour from the... It's like making a stock in that case, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. But it would be tempting to think, just grab the shells, boom, boom but we're going to need the shrimp Definitely obviously gonna, inside. Yeah, because we're going to need 250 grams of peeled, deveined shrimp. Right, the good news is you don't have to keep the shrimp looking pretty because they're going to get whizzed up. What's your method? Take the head off and then go round and round and round like you're peeling an ice cream. That's exactly what I was thinking, like a lolly. Like a, corn, like a cornetto. Oh, yeah. yeah. We are 10% of the way there. Yes! Do you know what I love about this book? When you have people around who know what you do for a living, yes. but have never watched a video, no. they assume that I'm a lot better in the kitchen than I actually am. Yes. They see the book out and they go, this guy knows his food. Do you find that you have to lower expectations? All the time. Yeah. We've been peeling prawns for what feels like a century, but we've had some help because uh, we have some frozen prawn heads left over in the freezer here, so we're just lobbing those in. But we do need to make sure that we've got enough meat for the prawn noodles. So we need 250 grams. We need to add 10 grams of tomato puree, two sprigs of tarragon, 60 grams of white wine. In a food processor, puree the shrimp, 0.5 grams of Activia RM. 
Activia RM, or transglutaminase, is an enzyme produced to bond raw meats. Created originally by a Japanese company to form inexpensive fish such as pollock into something resembling the texture of crab or lobster. The fact that it is so low means that it's going to be so strong. <laughs> please, please don't get bored when measuring this. <laughs> please. Yes, I love this attention to detail. Yes, 0.5. Oh no, wait, I've just read the rest of it. I also need 0.15 grams of cayenne pepper. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, keep going with it. Just gonna open it. Yeah, Just take, the, open take it. the seal off. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have some uh, kosher salt? How much? Three grams. I saw bits of poo and vein flying around the inside of that processor. It's flavour. Uh, no, I want to watch you now sift through that and pull out all the poo. There's a splodge on the bit where it says deveined. That's what. To be fair, the amount of celery that we've used yep. will make up for it with the flavour from the poo. Okay, good. <laughs> Pass through a coarse tamis. What's a coarse tamis? Right, I'm going to crack on with this. So we need remaining oil. So what? how much does a tablespoon weigh? Oh, isn't it uh, 25, I want to say. So exactly. 175 grams of oil needs to go into here. The mirepoix is tender and the alcohol is cooked down. Now add shrimp shells and the remaining oil. So it was 200 grams of oil and we used the tablespoon. Yep. So 175 grams of oil. Yeah, and our shrimp. Are you chuck those in first. Are they moving? <laughs> no, they're not. So we have our pureed shrimp with some cayenne pepper and our meat glue. And we are now passing it through a tammy, which is a French thing. It's essentially a baking tin with a sieve on the bottom. It is, it's exactly what it is. And we're passing that through into a bowl. Why? To catch what? Veins. Poo. Poo. <laughs> Pass through a coarse tanny, transfer the mixture into a piping bag. I hated this job last time I did it. Quite taxing on the wrist, isn't it? Yeah. That's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's just going on. It's just going on there, Kush. Get rid no, of it. Yeah. Do you want to read ahead and see what's next? Yes, I do. Set up a water bath to 136 degrees F, but turn the motor off. Oh, so we want it at the temperature, but we don't want it to circulate. Oh, it's a really good job that you passed it through that tammy, isn't it? It does look much better now. Oh, it looks so much better. Do you know what I like? Opening a packet of noodles, putting them in some hot water, cooking them, and then if I want prawns, I'll have prawns with them. <laughs> and we pipe the mixture into a noodle maker or extruder and extrude all of the shrimp puree into the water bath. Do we have a noodle maker? If you don't know how to extrude, sing for Pumpty... What? If you don't know how to extrude, sing for Pumpy the cow. Out in the pasture, there's a cow <laughs> named Pumpy. She's got a heart of gold and she's always so jumpy. Her coat is brown and white and her eyes are so bright. Pumpy's the one who always brings the light. What? What has happened? <laughs> oh, Pumpy, Pumpy, she's the cow for me. She's got a moo that's so sweet. There's no milk in this recipe, so what's the, what's the Pumpy? You're essentially making us sing for an extruder. <laughs> this has not been thought through. So, I'm going to fling for you to the end of each word. Out in the pasture, there's a cow named... Pumpy! She's got a heart of gold and she's always so... Jumpy! Her coat's brown and white and her eyes are so... Bright! Pumpy's the one who always brings the... Light! Oh, Pumpy, Pumpy, she's the cow for me. She's got a mood that's so sweet, like music to my ears, you see. With her brown eyes and her gentle touch, Pumpy's the cow that I love so... Much. Is this our pasture extruder? <laughs> this is Pumpy the cow. The noodle, obviously, a cow is a noodle extruder. I don't think this is what Wiley wants. <laughs> I'd prefer to go back home and look after a child that screams for 23 hours straight. <laughs> right, this has all got to go into a piping bag. Could you scrape my bottom? Yeah. So just to be clear, that Pumpy song... Was made up. By AI? Yes, to embarrass us in order to be able to get a noodle extruder. 
So we've got different, not let's go circular. Yeah, we don't want star shape. We're making spaghetti. Come on, we're making a reputable dish here. Right, so we... I'm, I'm in the back. <laughs> no. <laughs> Enjoying this? You're a father too, then. Oh, we're looking at each other in the eye. Yeah, we are. Oh, pumpy's full. Oh. Yeah, is she going to come straight out? It's going to come straight out as soon as I push it. Right, let's go over to the water bath. Put them in, cook for two minutes, then using scissors, cut the noodles to the length of spaghetti and plunge them into an ice bath and let them cool. Next up, drain the noodles and separate them. Dress with shrimp oil and store on parchment paper, lightly coated with cooking spray. Shrimp oil, done. Shrimp noodles, pretty much done. We need smoked yogurt and we need to make prawn crackers. We're just gonna smoke this, what, with a gun? Do we have the smoke gun? Uh, no, we don't have a smoke gun. We do have a smoke gun. It's not working. So, how are we gonna smoke, how are we gonna smoke it? Oh, is this a... So, we spent 100 quid on an amazing smoke gun. That we're now not allowed to use. And instead we've got colander maze and a <laughs> tea light candle. Do we need wood? Yeah, it's there. Wood oh, yeah. chips? Wood chips. How much wood do you think we need? I'm guessing we put it through the maze. Yeah, just do a little pathway. Okay, so we've got ice on a tray, and then the yogurt on the other tray. We've filled our smoker with wood, and we're gonna put it in the oven. Spread the yogurt over a pan, and place in a smoker above another pan filled with ice. Smoke the yogurt for three minutes. That is the most ridiculous way to light a tea light ever. Shrimps being strained. Do you know that this is called harvesting? Is it? Harvesting yeah. prawns? Harvesting the shrimp oil. Excellent. We all know it's a great feeling when you get rave reviews from others after they've eaten something that you've cooked. However, finding recipes that meet your expectation, being unsure whether you're doing it right halfway through the recipe, and having to constantly study images and scroll back and forth in recipe videos are certainly obstacles that I've encountered. Well, in this course, our vastly experienced chef, Kush, is going to teach us four seriously impressive crowd-pleaser dishes, which also teach the fundamentals to mastering bread dough. We'll learn how and why dough acts the way it does, how to impart incredible flavor, and what to look for so we know we're getting it right every step of the way. And most importantly, wowing the absolute ass off anyone who eats our stuff. Should we get baking? That's still smoking. Um, so we need three inches of oil in a pan. Three inches? Crush a few prawn crackers with a mortar and pestle into irregular, smallish shapes. Fry them until they puff for about a minute. Pat down on paper towels, dust with tomato powder, and sprinkle lightly with salt. Lovely. Great. Oh my God, did you know this is what prawn crackers look like before they cook? No, I did not. I didn't either. They look like blister pads. Yeah. Have you guys never seen prawn cracker pellets? No. Never seen that before. Oh, don't no. do that. Ugh. Should we cook those? Yeah, let's cook. Oh. So you crush them up? Yeah. Pack down on paper towels, dust with tomato powder to coat. Never used tomato powder before. Oh, wow, they look awesome. Sprinkle lightly with salt. They are banging. Nori powder. We could make our own one by drying nori sheets in the dehydrator for three hours. Or no, 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 no. <laughs> and then blends with fine powder. Or we could use this fine powder. <laughs> How smoky is that yogurt? I mean, it's smoky in the oven, that's for sure. Right, uh, next up, uh, we need to get the yogurt in a bowl and add paprika and salt and then allow the flavours to infuse for an hour. Nope. Shrimp oil. Look at that. Look. Oil over the top of the drained shrimpy noodles. So now, in a small saute pan, preheat the noodles over medium heat with a dash of shrimp oil, water and butter. Paint the yogurt onto a plate. Yeah, that's so chef isn't it? And top with a generous spoonful of warm noodles and prawn crackers. Dust the plate with nori powder. We've got all our components. It's plating time. So small. We've made prawny Bombay mix. 
we really need to think about how we're going to plate this. Because oh, really? they're supposed to be curled, but that's not going to happen. No. Like even if you had like a little ring of them, and at yeah. least if they were contained, yeah? And then you just have that there. Yep. This is what Wiley would have wanted. It is. Okay, we happy? Yep. <laughs> Watch this all fall apart. Oh, wait. That's not No, that's It shouldn't be at that angle. It looks silly. But hey, that's something. And I think with some delicate placement of these. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it at that. Shrimp Noodles by Wiley Dufresne, Michael Hutchestone and Jamie Spafford. Sorted. I mean, yes, there are elements to improve presentation-wise. But as two top chefs, I feel like we've done a good job. I, I feel like we've at least matched Wiley's expectations. Oh, his expectations. Okay, right, fine. I'm fascinated. Oh, look, and that's why we stacked them. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. To us. To us. Oh, wow, that tastes of... So much smoke and so, so much, much prawn. prawn. They're, they're much lighter than a normal noodle. Mmm. They've got really lovely texture and they're not overpoweringly prawny. They're like a meaty prawn. Yes. Like yeah. all those subtleties of, of the sea. Your um, smoked yoghurt is fantastic. I was really worried after all of that. I looked at it and went, but is it going to be worth it? That was my honest question at the end of that. But that is, that is delicious. And what an experience. Like we did, we did a good job. We did a, we did a good job. We did a good job. It's the other two that are holding us back. It's, I've always said that. Yes. This, this was a lot of fun. We deserve a high five. What do you think? How do you think we got on? Comment down below, let us know. Plus, what other cookbooks should we be cooking from in the future? Because it turns out we can handle it. We're a mate, like you did the Mrs. Beatons with Evers and you saw how that went. Yeah. All you needed was a better chef subbed in that's what it was. And a better environment in the kitchen. Yeah.